Why does alcohol make people behave differently to normal? To find out, I am going to be the subject of our very own experiment. I'm going to drink increasing amounts of alcohol and Chris is going to make me perform a series of tests so that you can see what's going on with my body inside and out. OK, time for the experiment to begin. Sand, here's your first drink. Right, thanks very much. Uh, aren't you going to have one? No, I'm running the experiment. Right. Well, this seems a little less fun on my own. OK. So, what's happening inside as Zand takes his first drink? When you swallow an alcoholic drink, it heads on down to your stomach. Some of it passes directly into your bloodstream from there, so it gets to work really quickly. Once in Zand's blood, there's no going back. He travels quickly all around his body, including his brain. Within just 90 seconds of taking your first sip, alcohol gets to work, dulling the activity of your cerebral cortex. That's the part of your brain which deals with thoughts, senses and most voluntary muscle movements. This can make you feel more relaxed, more talkative and less inhibited. But it also affects your judgement and can lead you to make bad decisions. Let's see how Zand is coping. <laughs> no, I'm ready. I'm ready. This is science. This is science. Can I ask you, before we started, did you feel like having the first drink? No. No, not at all? No. If I offered you another drink now... I, would, I, would, I was going to ask, can I have another one? Right. So this is how having one drink leads to another. Your decision-making is impaired. Your decision-making is impaired. One of the things that happens after a small amount of alcohol is it makes you feel good. It makes you feel relaxed, funny, happy. All the things that seem to be happening to you at the moment aren't. Do you think you could go to mum and dad's and have dinner and, and get away with it? I might let you do a bit. I'd let you do the talking. Do you think you'd be able to stay quiet? <laughs> Earlier, I did some tests on Zand when he was completely sober. I'm going to repeat these tests now to see if one alcoholic drink has made any difference. First, I did the ruler test to check Zahn's reaction skills. He was speedy when sober, catching the ruler after 19 centimetres. But how will he get on after one drink? Ah! It's falling faster this time. Zahn can't even catch it. It feels like this is a long way away now and I can... That ruler... So I think we can see that, just from the minor changes in Zahn's behaviour, that the alcohol's already affecting his brain. All right. But let's see how it's affecting the rest of your body now. Before having any booze, Zahn's pulse was 66 beats per minute. After only one drink, it's risen to 83. So Zahn's pulse has gone up, and it's a sign his heart is under stress. The alcohol has a direct effect on the heart, but also it's having to work harder to send more blood to the skin. OK, let's check your blood pressure. Earlier, Zahn's blood pressure was 108 over 73. Now it's 142 over 78. Zahn now has high enough blood pressure that we would almost consider him to have a medical condition, high blood pressure, hypertension. An earlier breathalyzer test showed Zahn's blood alcohol level was zero. After only one drink, it's 0.12. It's not actually safe for him to drive. So in a litre of Zahn's blood, there'd be an amount of alcohol about the same as the tip of my little finger. And that might not sound like much, but as you can see, he's behaving differently and he is well over the legal, safe driving limit, as we're about to find out. Obviously, Zand would never normally touch a drop of alcohol if he was going to drive, but today he is going to be over the limit and I've set up a special course here at this airfield to assess just exactly how dangerous alcohol is if you mix it with driving. First of all, he's going to do a loop of the course, then he's got to do a three-point turn without hitting any of these cones, then he's got to try and avoid hitting our dog, Snowball. Here's Snowball over here. Caroline's our dog handler. This is Snowball. Be safe, Snowball. <laughs> now, I don't expect there to be any serious accidents, but we've got Matt and Seb, our paramedics over there, with the ambulance. And in charge of the whole thing, we've got Nigel, who is an ex-policeman, a current driving instructor, and he's in this car, which has dual controls. So if anything goes wrong, you can step in. Absolutely. I'll be ready for it. You're ready for him, yes. you think? OK. Ready for Dr Zahn. Remember, Zahn has had just one drink. 
Seatbelt on. I know, I know. Right. Are you ready, Nigel? I'm ready. Okay. I'm going to get out of the way. First, he must do a lap of the course. I think we should step back a bit. He's taking that bend way too fast and isn't keeping within the white lines at all. That's quick. Okay, what we'll do is it'd be a bit too quick. Oh, a little bit slower. Alcohol gives you an increased feeling of confidence. It impairs your judgment. Okay, where am I going? Down, down, down here. there, and we're going to do a three-point turn. And just in case you thought Zand was a rubbish driver, we filmed him doing this three-point turn before he'd had any booze. He was pretty slick. But after a drink, it's not so easy. Oh, oh, oh. Steady, steady. It can't be a very comfortable ride for Nigel and our cameraman. And that's, yeah. I hope you might have noticed that. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. sorry, OK, OK. Right side of the road, there we go. That was pretty rubbish, but there's one more test. How will he cope when we release the hound? When sober, Zand reacted quickly. Right, that's good. But what will happen now he's had a drink? Oh. Oh. But he doesn't bear thinking about what would have happened if that was a real dog or, worse, a real person. The poor little guy. How do you think he did? Wasn't good. Right from the beginning, went far too fast. He almost lost control, and I had to use the brakes to slow you down. Oh, you stepped in? I, stepped, I had to use the brakes. It really was too oh. fast. You ran over a cone, which could have been a pedestrian. You ran over a radio-controlled car that could have been a dog or a person. And you, don't, you didn't even particularly internalise how did, badly it went. I, I do get now that it's bad. I, I think when we started, I had that, that sort of confidence of going, oh, I've had a bit of wine, but I'm OK. Right. And I, Alcohol has a huge number of different effects on the brain, but particularly the cortex, where you think and where you control your muscles, and also the cerebellum, the bit at the back, that controls coordination and reaction speed. You all right? I'm all right. Ooh. I should maybe have a sit down. Yeah.